До свидания. Wait for them to go and then I'll start. Jashilik Shair Shatanga. The biggest challenge is the word no. The world is full of no. We hear no every day. Sometimes we're even the ones saying it. You tell people you want to have an adventure, to try something that's never been done, and they say no. That's too dangerous. It's too far. You can't go that way. It's not possible. Don't even try. You'll hurt yourself. Just no. And you've got to have the strength and the courage to turn around and say, well, actually, yes. When I got to Kyrgyzstan, I was met with no everywhere I went. No one had done what I was trying to do, and so no one believed I could do it. But I decided to say yes to adventure. And this is the story. I love mountains. I still don't know how to answer people who ask me why I'm doing this. I didn't want to set a world record, and it's not about running a thousand kilometers either. The distance doesn't matter, as long as I make it across the country. I came here looking for a true adventure. I picked Kyrgyzstan because I didn't know anything about it, except that it has wicked mountains where nomads still live. I came here looking to push myself physically, mentally, and emotionally, and to explore one of the few unmapped regions left on this beautiful planet. It's exciting, and also scary, that no one has done this route before. It's incredible to have the opportunity in this day and age to attempt something that's never been done. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I can run that far. I don't know if I can survive out here. Adventures and exploring can't be predicted. That's the beauty of it. I have to get up there. I've climbed two thousand I'm brain dead. Fifteen hundred meters so far today. Really struggling with this elevation. And the top of that path, path, top of that path, is where I'm headed. I'm scared, genuinely scared. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's gonna take you out of me. That was, without a doubt, the hardest climb I can ever remember doing. Holy shit. I couldn't look down over the last 500 meters of elevation because it was so steep, just crawling with my hands. But they say work for your views. Look at that. Look at where I am. My day-to-day -day schedule is pretty easy. 
My to-do list every day includes eating, finding water, finding a safe place to sleep, and hopefully running a little bit closer towards my goal. Big adventures sound thrilling and exciting, but the reality is that the day-to-day -day is fairly mundane and just filled with only the necessities to human existing, which feels really cleansing. It gives you a really good perspective on your comfortable life back home and what's really important, how you want to spend your time. Life is so busy. Out here it's hard, that's for sure, but it's also simple. So my plan is to cross the country following ancient nomad trails as much as possible. The problem with that is that they aren't mapped, so a lot of the time I'm guessing and hoping. Sometimes I find easy double track and sometimes I get stuck and I have to decide to either turn around or just forge through. When I do come down to the roads, it's fair to say they're pretty interesting. A line in the map might make you believe that you'll be crossing a main highway but you get there and it's practically rubble. Sometimes it's even washed away. My biggest problem so far has been with crossing rivers. Sometimes marked bridges just aren't there or were never completed. So it's hard to know if I'm gonna get across or have to make a slightly dangerous river crossing by myself. But if I knew what would happen every day, why would I bother coming here? It's definitely an adventure. This is what happens to your legs when you decide to take your own route through the mountains. It stings. So, I asked the cafe if I could use the washroom. And there it is. walking, which sucks. I ran out of water maybe an hour ago and it's crazy hot today so I'm trying to save energy and I've come down to the road with the hopes of passing a magazine shop soon and I'm just gonna buy all the juice, all the sugar. Uh, I'm really feeling it today and the worst part is that every driver that comes past me stops and tries to get me to take a ride because why on earth would anyone walk anywhere um, and it's really tempting I have to admit they're they're really testing my motivation and my commitment today but get some water maybe eat something and hopefully get back to running. It's only 3 p.m. So, got a ways to go yet. I've just had that shepherd come over and insist that I'm not safe here, that I'll be eaten by wolves. Um, of course, I don't speak Russian, so he mimed wolves for me, which was really exciting. Um, and insisted I come join them in their yurt, which is way over there. Um, I don't think I'll ever make it. Uh, he was hilarious and invited me to come drink kumis, which is uh, fermented horse's milk. So maybe I'll pay him a visit after I've had a wash. Um, I'm not particularly scared of wolves in this valley. 
I think there's a lot of livestock the wolves are going to take before they take me. But maybe I won't sleep with my food right inside my tent. Running is the easy bit of all this. I know how to run. I've been doing it for a really long time. When my legs start to hurt, I know how to deal with that. The hard part is managing what's going on in my head. I have to keep focused, but also keep positive. Sometimes I have to entertain myself when I don't see other people for a really long time. Sometimes I feel really scared and I'm the only one there to calm myself down. I have to stay really resilient when everyone I meet tells me that what I'm trying to do can't be done and I need to stop. That's really hard some days when everything is going wrong and I'm starting to have my own doubts. But on those days, I have running and running always makes me feel good. This is the best part. It's all downhill. And then just in the distance, I can see the next city where I get to resupply. And I have it on good authority that there's a pizza restaurant. So I'm going to take this downhill really fast because I'm so excited for pizza. There's a competition going on in my body right now for who gets to complain the loudest. My legs are aching and fatigued from hauling me up these hills. My feet are swollen and blistered. My backpack is digging into my shoulders. I swear that every night when I lie down in my sleeping bag, I think I don't have another day left in me. I'm just so worn out. And somehow I wake up in the morning and I'm ready to go again. It's pretty incredible what you can put the body through and it will cope. Today was a rough day. Mistakes were made. I should not have come this way. Stupid. Oh no. Oh no. Oh god. <laughs> I mean, now is the most scared I've ever felt. I I went down this valley and then it, it turned into a canyon and I knew that I couldn't continue. There's just too much water and and so I just had to climb hands and knees about 600 meters up a shale loose. I can't even bring myself to put the camera over the edge because I just can't look at it again. I really thought I was going to die. This is so far from ideal. This isn't really fun right now. I just, I just want to get somewhere safe and call my mom. God, I'm such an idiot. So, after yesterday's near-death experience and that catastrophe, I actually managed to arrive at my planned destination, the lake, but I got there really late and um, as soon as I arrived, I was waved in by a nomad family and they just waved me in and come sit in the yurt and here, come have some hummus, come have some chai. You'll sleep here, right? Yeah, okay, we'll feed you. and. Um, and so I was just completely taken in by this nomadic family. And it was just the most lovely thing in the world. Can you imagine seeing a tourist and then saying, yeah, come, come stay with my family, come eat my food, just automatically. You know, it's mountain people look out for each other.
time for a progress check. Five hundred point one kilometers. It's the halfway point. Just come from way up there. Been running downhill all morning. Halfway. Halfway across these mountains. It's taken me two weeks to get to this point. So just do that again and we'll be there. Halfway. 500 freaking kilometers. This is starting to be too much of a regular occurrence. I check the map and there's a stream and then I get to the stream and the stream is long since gone. I think about water all the time, all the time. And this is pretty bad when I can't rely on the streams that are marked on the maps, even though there's snow in the mountains still you get to the bottom of the valley and there's nothing left. So let's cross our fingers that the next stream does have something in it because it's going to be a very long night for me if I can't get some water. I'm running at night. I know I shouldn't be sunset kind of snuck up on me and every river again was dry so I couldn't get any water um, and I was only seven kilometers away from the next river the only problem was there was a mountain pass in that seven kilometers um, so I've actually had a very enjoyable nighttime downhill run I've been going at a good clip the stars are out I'm not super warm for once. I'm actually at a good temperature. And yeah. I've got bad news. I'm gonna have to get rid of my tent. He's so big! spent the entire night throwing up. I feel really, really terrible today. I just really want to keep going, but I'm running on an empty stomach and I don't trust it. I feel really terrible. I do not feel well at all. I really can't trust my stomach anymore. I feel so weak and depleted. This heat. I'm in a very dark place today. I don't feel good.
Bye, Mountain. It's been a long trip so far. The biggest challenge is the word no. You hear it from friends, strangers, and most dangerously, you hear it from yourself. There's always a risk that it might not work. There's always a risk that it's gonna be awful. But if you believe in yourself, if you can open your heart to experiences, if you can ignore the word no, you're gonna have an adventure. And who could say no to adventure?